Greetings, folks. Today, we're going to talk about nodal analysis. Nodal can solve all kinds of circuits. And what we're going to look at here is multi-source circuits. So let's take an example. Just a nice little resistive network here. But unlike circuits we've looked at recently, this one has two sources. And they're not arranged in a simple uh, arrangement so that we could maybe just add them together, right? This is a much more complicated sort of situation. Make that one 12 volts. Make this one 20 volts. And then for the resistors, I'm just going to make that 1 ohm. 2 ohms, 10 ohms, 4 ohms, and 5 ohms. Now, just looking at this, you really have no good idea in which way some of these currents are flowing. Uh, given the sizes of the voltage sources and the resistors, it's sort of up in the air. So what does nodal do? Nodal basically uses Kirchhoff's current law at each node. So you write a KCL summation. First, we have to identify the nodes. First, we have a reference node, which is going to be ground. And then other places where wires connect, right? Where currents can combine or split. Right here, we'll call that node A. Right here, we'll call that node B. So those are our nodes. Now you're going to create a KCL equation at each node with the exception of the reference node. Right? In our case, so that's A and B, we're going to wind up with two equations here. Now before we do this, I want to define where the currents are. So, directions are kind of um, arbitrary in a way. As you'll see, it's not going to make any difference. So I'm just going to say there's a current flowing through the 1 ohm. I'm going to call that I1. I'll say there's a current flowing down through the 2 ohm. I'll call that I2. Um, and then I'm going to just assume it's going from left to right on the 10 ohm. I'll call that I3. It could be going the other way, but it's not going to be a problem, as you'll see. And then just finishing off here, we'll say I4 is flowing down this way. And um, just to be different, I'm going to say the current flowing through the 5 is going this way. And we'll call that I5. So at each of these nodes, we write a KCL summation, right? Remember KCL is the summation of the currents going into the nodes has to equal the summation of the currents leaving those nodes. What goes in must come out. So for node A, what we wind up with is I1's coming in, I2 and I3 are going out. All right, so that's step one. We write the KCL summation. Now, we take each of these current terms and we write them in their Ohm's law equivalent, right? So we basically use Ohm's law to sort of tease out the things that we know, the voltages and the resistance, uh, and determine ultimately the unknowns, which are the currents, okay? So how do I write I1? Well, I1 by definition is the voltage across this one ohm resistor right, divided by one ohm. Well, what is the voltage across this resistor? Well, by definition, it would be the voltage on this side minus the voltage on this side. It's this minus this because we're assuming the current is flowing from left to right, you know, high to low, so to speak. So I would write that as 12 volts minus whatever VA happens to work out to divided by one ohm. 
that's what I1 is. Do the same thing for I2. Well, that's just VA divided by 2 ohms. And then for I3, similar sort of deal, VA minus VB divided by 10 ohms. Okay, before we go any further, because people seem to have some issues with, uh, you know, this whole thing about the current, which way is it going? If you had assumed the current was going the other way, if you had assumed it was going from B to A, then I3 would have been an entering current, and it would have been on this side of the equal sign. But you would have written it as VB minus VA. It's flowing from B to A. So if you had VB minus VA over 10 on this side, and you brought it over to this side, you get what we already have. So it's not going to make any difference. It'll all come out in the wash, so to speak. Um, if we're wrong on our assumption, I3, I3 will turn out to be a negative number. That's all that ends up happening. Okay, so now the next step is to sort of isolate the unknowns, in this case, VA and VB. So we sort of collect up our terms, simplify it. So we're going to get 12 volts over 1 ohm over here. All right, that's the constant that we wind up with. And then VA terms, right, I've got basically a, a negative uh, a VA divided by 1 ohm. And then we have uh, 1 half times VA. And then we have uh, this 1 tenth times VA and a negative 1 tenth times VB. So let's collect those up. All right, so we've got 1 over 1 ohm, 1 over 2 ohms, 1 over 10 ohms, all times VA. And then we have a negative 1 tenth for VB. And now we can simplify that a little bit more. All right, this is 12 amps. And then 1 plus a half plus a tenth is 1.6. And then negative 0.1 for VB. So that equation is now done. I turn my attention to node B. Looking at node B. I3, I5 are coming in, I4 is leaving. KCL summation. All right, let's write these in terms of their Ohm's law equivalence. I3, well, we already did I3, right? That's VA minus VB over 10. And I5, similar kind of thing we saw back here. That's going to be 20 minus VB. Sitting over the 5 ohm. And then I4 is just VB divided by 4 ohms. All right, same deal. Pull out our constant, which in this case is going to be the, the uh, 20 volts over 5 ohms and then separate out the v, VA and VB coefficients. And let's see what we get. So we got 20 over 5 ohms. And then we have a single VA term over here, which on this side of the equal sign is going to wind up to be a negative 1 tenth, 1 over 10. And then all the VB terms, we've got the, the 10 ohm, the 5 ohm, and the 4 ohm, right? All right, same deal. Let's simplify this 20, um, 20 volts divided by 5 ohms gives us 4 amps. A tenth for VA. And then we've got a tenth, a fifth, and a quarter. That's going to be 0.55 for VB. You now have two equations and two unknowns. So I'm going to copy this equation over to here. When you do this, make sure that you line up 
your A's and B's and C's and D's, right? You're going to have as many equations as you have nodes. So in this case, we have two nodes, two equations, um, again, minus the reference node. Um, but line them all up. So you got all your A terms, B terms, C terms, D terms. That'll make it easier for this thing to solve. It'll be in a, uh, a nice format. All right, so these are my two equations that I need to solve. How do I wish to solve them? Oh, you could use Gauss-Jordan elimination. It's only a two by two, so you could do a simple determinant using uh, rule of Ceres. Your choice, all right, how you want to solve this thing. But before you do, there's something to notice. This will, uh, the set of equations, should show diagonal symmetry. So if I drew a diagonal across like this, everything on the diagonal would be positive, everything else is going to be negative, and there'll be symmetry. In other words, if I move orthogonally off of that diagonal, I'll have the same terms, right? Negative 0.1, negative 0.1. So if, just to see this a little bit better, if we had maybe four, and I'm just going to put little circles here to represent my coefficients. If we had a four by four, what would end up happening is our diagonal would be like this. And all the things in the diagonal, all those terms, coefficients, would be positive. All these other ones out here would all be negative. And then as you move orthogonally off of it like this, we would see the symmetry. So this is the same as this, and this is the same as this, and this is the same as this, and this guy is the same as that guy, right? This is this, this is this, right? So you just move off like that, and you see perfect symmetry. If you don't have that, stop. There's no reason to go any further. Right? You're done. That's it. Okay? You've made a mistake somewhere. Don't go any further. Okay, so however you solve this, however you go about doing this, right, we'll wind up with a VA of 8.046 volts and a VB of 8.736 volts. I have the voltages, I can now go back in the original circuit and I can find any currents I'm interested in. Notice, for example, our assumption on I3 was wrong. VB is more positive than VA. I3 really is going this way. Okay? All the other ones happen to be uh, correct, but that one we assumed incorrectly. But it's okay, it all works out. Let's do a little cross check. So I'm gonna check at node A. I'm just going to go back to my original circuit, plug in the values, and see what I get. So what is my I1? All right. My, you know, my original idea here, 12 minus VA. Okay, so that's 12 volts minus 8.046 volts. Divide that by 1 ohm. All right. That's going to work out to 3.954 amps. And I want to look at I2. So what's I2? Well, it's VA divided by the 2 ohms. So 8.046 volts divided by 2 ohms. And we get 4.024 4 amps. And then finally, I3, right, which we defined as uh, going from A to B. Now watch what's going to happen here. VA minus VB. It's going to be 8.046 minus the VB of 8.736. Divide that by 10 ohms. And what we wind up with is a negative current, right? So the negative just assumes, or just tells us that our initial assumption was wrong. That works out to um, approximately a negative 69 milliamps. All right. So these were the outgoing. Add these two together, in other words, subtract 69 milliamps from 4.024 amps, and what do you get? You get your 3.954, right? So I2 plus I3 equals I1. Beautiful. Nice cross-check. Okay, now I want to show you a little shortcut here. This is really cool. 
if you noticed, right, I'm going to go back to these equations right here. You might have noticed something. And that is the values that we wound up for the currents. If you go back to the original circuit, that's what you would get if you did a source conversion. In other words, if I take this 12 volt 1 ohm and I do a source conversion on it, that converted source is going to look like this, right? Here's my 1 ohm. I would find the maximizing current, which is 12 volts over 1 ohm, or 12 amps. I'm just going to continue with the rest of the circuit over here. Here's the 2, here's the 10, all right? So, you know, this is my node A here, all right? Continuing along, there's the 4. Now let me do the same thing over here with the 20 volt and the 5. So what would we wind up with? We would wind up with the 5 ohm being translated over in parallel. And then, of course, the current source. And that's positive on top, so the current's feeding in. And we would determine the maximizing value for that current source, which would be 20 volts over 5 ohms. Right, which is, of course... 4 amps. There's my node B. Now, look at this little blue circuit. Look at these two equations. You can determine these equations. Once you have it in this form, in other words, once you have the circuit so that it has nothing but current sources, and that's easy enough to do with the source conversions, once you have it in this form, you can get these equations just by observation. Just by looking at the circuit, you can come up with these two equations. Okay, here's how you do it. Consider a particular node. I'll just start with A, all right? Appropriate. Ask yourself, what current sources are connected to this node? If they're incoming, they're positive. If they're outgoing, they're negative. So I look at this and I say, well, I've got a 12, 12 amp current source coming in. Great. Now, what components are attached to node A. The 1 ohm, the 2 ohm, and the 10 ohm. The 1 ohm, the 2 ohm, the 10 ohm. You just have to remember to put these in conductance form. All right, so there's the 1 ohm, the 2 ohm, and the 10 ohm. That's times VA. And then we say, is there anything connected to this node that's connected to another node that's not ground, right? Not my reference, reference node. And the answer is, uh, yeah, that's the 10 ohm. Okay, so throw that one in. Again, conductance. Make sure it's negative. That equation is this equation. Then I look over here at the second node, B, and I ask the same thing. What do I have the way in current sources feeding this node? Well, I got the 4 amp. What's connected to node B? Well, the 10, the 4, the 5. I'm going to leave a little space over here because I'm going to have to have a VA. But just list them up, right? There's my 10, the 4, the 5. Again, just remember to make sure that it's in conductance form, right? Because it's times a voltage. So, you know, it's got to be Siemens times volts to get you the amps. So that's this. And then you ask again, is there anything connected to node B that's connected to any of the other nodes? Well, yeah, there's the 10 ohm that's connected back to A. So that shows up as a negative one tenth VA. That equation is this equation. Now, if you had a node C and node D and so forth, you would just continue with this, right? In other words, on A, you would say, okay, what's connected to A? Is there anything from A to B? Is there anything from A to C, right? That would give me a C term. Is there anything from A to D? That would give me a D term. If you don't have anything, you just put zeros in there, right? And you wind up with your set. So in a larger system, if you have, um, you know, many different sources, it's probably going to be advantageous to do the source conversions, get your current sources, get the equations by observations, because you're going to skip this whole thing in here, right? It's much less error prone. The only thing is, when you get done, whenever you do this kind of thing, whatever you've converted, like 
that resistor, that resistor. The converted elements are not going to have the same voltage or current as in the original. In other words, this 1 ohm is not going to have the same voltage or current as the original 1 ohm. And it makes sense because both of these things are connected to node A, but in this case, this 1 ohm is connected back to the voltage source, this 1 ohm is connected back to ground. So they're not going to see the same, but the rest of the circuit will. Okay, so nodal is very convenient. Um, there isn't a circuit really that it can't solve. Um, all you have to do is do your KCL, right? So this is what we might call it sort of a general approach. And then we have this sort of simplified version, if you will, this uh, by observation version, where you just do the current source conversions and off you go. And it's really nice because um, you wind up with really what you want in circuits like this, which is the various voltages, right? So it winds up being extremely, extremely convenient. Cool.